when when you you mentioned um, earlier before we started this that we we now able to use the word capitalism again and it's, it was interesting because Josh and I was having this discussion a few uh, months ago where really uh, there seemed to have been a 40 year moratorium on the use of the word uh, and for whatever reason that was really i guess the the height of neoliberalism but if you really want to think about capitalism as, capitalism as a system you really need to go back to karl marx you don't have to call yourself a marxist uh, but if you want to think about the questions uh, like the ones that you've posed, you really have to take Marx very seriously because uh, in some sense, uh, his work was the fount of many of the ways that people are thinking about capitalism. So uh, again, Josh and I are uh, working on a book and we sort of take up this question about uh, capital and what capitalism uh, means. And in our minds, I think it really has a clear definition. I think that it has three elements or three faces. Um, so what's the first? The first is sort of the conversion of all kinds of human activities and their products into commodities, this thing that you actually uh, buy and sell, you know, this alienated thing, and that they sold in markets. That's the first. The second is uh, the endless accumulation of money as an end to itself, this kind of drive of the system, which seems to be out of human control. Um, and then finally, something which is uh, very critical in, uh, and, uh, you know, which I think gives in some sense uh, capital volume one, some of, some of its uh, emotional heft, which is the hierarchy in the workplace where people work under the authority of the boss, right? And now all of these elements are there historically, but their fusion in this kind of incredibly changeful system that we've had in the 200 years, that has been unique. Um, you know, I think that's the, the really kind of central um, aspect that we want to focus on, the combination of these three things. There may be other elements that we want to talk about, but these three things, uh, and it's, the fact that when combined, it gives you this dynamism, this ability to transform society in these far-reaching ways and ways that really seem, in some sense, um, uh, out of really the kind of human uh, sphere of control. That's what I would say uh, capitalism is. Uh, Josh, maybe you want to speak about industrial capitalism. Or... Yeah, I mean, what, right. I think, I mean, what are you? Well, I, I obviously we're working together on this stuff and I agree. I think it's it's sort of the correct definition of capitalism as a system. Um, and I think I think the problem comes when you try to pull out one of those elements in isolation and think that's what defines the system, but it's really the fusion of the three of them. Um, I think you know the other the other piece, which maybe isn't quite as defining, but I think historically has been very important, is that the the process of endless accumulation has this moment in the middle of it where where money is tied up, locked up in long lived um, means of production that you're not just you know buying a commodity, working it up, and then and then selling it again, um, but you've got you've got machines, you've got buildings, you've got technology, so that there's this long gap between the outlay and the, and the final final sale. And that's, you know, that that's, I think, one of the things that has made this a system that actually is really dynamic and has transformed human productive capacities um, in ways that, you know, I think we would we would agree with Marx's judgment that in the long run really expand the space for human freedom and possibilities. Um, because because it's, it's, it's sort of broken up the sort of old local simple ways of carrying out productive activity and, and allow people to have a much more extensive division of labor, much wider scale cooperation, and the development of all of these new ways of, of transforming the world through technology that, um, you know, that didn't exist before, or that were much, you know, let's not say didn't exist, but, but developed much more slowly in limited ways before. Um, but this is also where a lot of the conflict comes up, because you, you, you build up a business and it exists sort of for its own purposes, its own function, it has its own norms, it has its own sort of internal logic. And then at some point, you have to turn the products of that back into money to keep keep the accumulation process going. And so so a lot of the sort of tensions I think around the system come, come from that. The other part of your question, you know, can economics explain capitalism? I think from our point of view, economics is, is part of the, the larger set of social phenomena that kind of grow out of, of, of generalization of, of capitalism as a way of organizing human life and productive activity. So in that sense, you, you, can't, you can't really use the tools of economics to explain capitalism because economics is, is kind of within capitalism. The categories of economics are really specific to capitalism. And if you want to explain the, the origins of it, certainly, you can do that, but you need a different set of tools. It's more of a historical kind of question than, than one that you can uh, answer with the tools of economics. 